I think I have to hitchhike in the Middle East because we're stranded in the middle of nowhere right now. I think people will stop if I'm like, Yoo-hoo! over here. <laughs> okay, I'll just, I'll just do the normal, the regular universal hitchhiking side. That's more understandable. Yeah, it's no problem. Thank you, car. We you. got a car! <laughs> Just as far as you can hear the Mavi. One of our... We're continuing our road trip throughout this beautiful country of the Sultanate of Oman and today we're heading up to the Green Mountains but the thing is is that I've heard we may need a 4x4 to get up there I hope not but because we don't have a 4x4 we just have a two-wheel drive so we'll see we're on our way it's gonna be about an hour drive from Nizwa to there the mountain but we hear that there's like a patrol that's stationed to kind of verify we have a 4x4 we'll see so we're at the we just got turned around. Actually, originally they let us through, but then I don't know if the guard posts were being sarcastic because they were like, okay, no problem. And then they opened the gate, let us through, but then they were like, wait, wait, wait. Like they, like they were shouting and then we had to stop a car and then you're like, you have to turn around. You don't have four wheel drive. Of course we don't have a four wheel drive. You saw that and you let us through. So now I'm not sure what we're gonna do. We're just gonna park here and maybe figure, figure something out. We're gonna see. So this is kind of like a car park as well. I think a few other people are in our situation too. I think I have to hitchhike in the Middle East because we're stranded in the middle of nowhere right now. So are we 100% sure that we're going to? Yeah, of course. We've done it before. Yeah, but the thing is, I haven't done it since when I was in Hawaii, like during spring break university. And when was the last time you hitchhiked? Seven years ago. And where was that? New Zealand. New Zealand! Uh, <laughs> this is yeah. the Middle East. Okay. People are very friendly here. That's true. Omanis are like the friendliest. Not even just like in the Not even just like in the Middle East, but in the world that I've, of all the countries I've traveled to, Omanis are some of the friendliest people, but I'm still a little nervous about hitchhiking. I don't know, just the idea, and I haven't done it in so long, but um, okay, so first things first, I guess we have to find a spot. Find a spot. Okay. People will stop if I'm like over here. <laughs> okay, I'll just do the normal, the regular universal hitchhiking side. That's more understandable. Being on a sweater because it's actually been quite chilly. Up you, the mountain. Yeah, up the mountain. You know, it's sunny and clear blue skies. Yeah, it's no problem. Thank you, sir. We you. got a car! <laughs> oh my gosh, that was so easy. That was literally, I mean, got a few rejects, but... Oh, here we go, here we go. Oh, it's nice. 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 Oh, it's it's tight space. It's so awesome! Thank you! And that was our ride! We 
successfully hitchhike in Oman. So now we are 2,090 meters on top of this huge mountain plateau area. Our driver dropped us off at the gas station because he's also filling up on gas. And now we are, where are we? I think that gave us a new milestone in our relationship. I see. Hitchhiking together. Yeah, this is our first time ever hitchhiking together as a couple. <laughs> So we are now in Sayik. That is the town actually that we wanted to get to anyway. So that, that was perfect actually. It was a 40 minute drive up this mountain. And of course 40 minutes is like casual, but it was looping, it was quite steep. And you know, I spent summers in Switzerland. Jeroen has drove us around in our Norway trip. So we're used to mountain roads. But the thing is, is why the authorities created that border guard. Well, not, ooh, I did again. The guard post, not border post. Is that they don't want a two-wheel drive to, it's not the issue of going up, but when you come down, because of the heat in Oman, especially during the summer months, it can get crazy hot and we heat up the car and we shut down the engine. So they don't want that. That's the, that's the issue, right? No, heat up the brakes because you're braking so much and then the brakes won't work. Well, you, you are the driver. Experience it on the motorbike and time. Yes, you are the driver in our relationship though. So, so that, that's the issue. So it's much easier to have control with a 4x4. And that's why we had to hitchhike. And that was an amazing experience, just being in the car, having conversations, talking about money lifestyle, about how, just the wonderful food that they have here. Speaking of food, we are planning to start our trek from Saik to this little village throughout the mountains but the thing is is that uh, we are quite hungry so we are going to try to find some traditional restaurant joint food to grab some eats in this village Saik before we head on out So we got these pastries from this restaurant and it turns out it's pizza or at least it looks exactly like pizza. It has cheese and it smells like pizza. Mine has chicken, some goat and even shrimp on it too. Even though the menu they just call it a pastry. Mmm. This here is the terrace view where we're starting our hike. So the terrace view, if you look out here, is this Grand Viesta. And you can see different little Omani villages up in the mountains dotted all around and we'll be hiking through those villages as well. But where the name Terrace Views come from is these ledges. It reminds me of my birth country in Sao Paulo with the little different levels of rice. Ooh. Is that a call to prayer? And it's coming from the call of prayer is coming from that village all the way down there. But the Terrace Views, you can see the different layers of green. Just like in Sapa in Vietnam with the different layers, kind of like a cake layer of the rice fields. And it's no coincidence that the Green Mountain got its name from the greens surrounded. This is a pool. Yeah. See that? But uh, part of the water. Oh yes. So it's really behind it. Yeah. And you see like the whole river bed. The dry river bed right now. And All it rains a lot and it will fill up. Ooh. That's cool. Example of a village that we're passing through right now. You can see the trail marks. Look at the water. Precarious edges everywhere. Watch our steps. Trying to run to look cool. 
you judge if it's worth it. In this village that now we're passing through, you can see there's boxes up there, but that's for cultivating honey. So, I'm gonna zoom in, you'll see all these bees buzzing. You can hear them too. And of course, they use honey for a lot of things, for breakfast, for hawa, or the dessert that we had in Niswa. So it's pretty cool to see it being in production right here. So we made it back into town and not gonna lie, the trek, we've done many treks before, South Africa, again, Norway, so many treks, but whew, maybe it's the heat, we even took off our sweaters that we wore, but I am a tired goose. Also, it doesn't help that we ate pizza before the trek, <laughs> so now we have to make our way all the way down, down to where we parked our car from this top of this mountain, ooh, so that means that we need to start hitchhiking again. Okay, so where's the good spot? Do you think here? Yeah. Okay, so I'll just stick up my thumb again. Anybody? <laughs> Got a lift by fellow travelers too. Uh, we're, I'm from Canada. Canada? Yeah, I'm um, from uh, the Netherlands. Ah, Netherlands. Yeah. Netherlands. Where are you from? Uh, Italy. Ah, where in Italy? Uh, in the north part, in the Alps. Oh, oh beautiful. beautiful. It's in the city, it's uh, uh, Bolzano. Oh, Bolzano. Oh, Bolzano is so beautiful. Hi. Yeah. <laughs> it's uh, not too not far. Not too far. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. A good compromise. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and. and uh, yeah, for the yeah. it's ideal. Good. And Morocco. Hi. Look at this. We made it back down the mountain and back to our car. Steamy car. It's hot and a little smelly in here. You. No, it's steamy. It's steamy. Because we went on the AC. Oh. So, our friends. Julia and Paolo from uh, Bolzano in the Italian Alps helped us out and picked us up. We got hitchhiking experience from other travelers and locals from this morning as well. And it was so, so great. Just, you know, they were having converse, we were just having conversations on the ride down. And it turns out that they're both farmers from Italy and they do apple farming and grape farming for the vineyards around and they're on a 12-day road trip around Oman just like us too. I say that was a mission successful. What do you think? Yeah, we did it. Yes, we did it. We did it. We did it. We did it. Take my go right. <laughs> So our next destination doesn't have any uh, house number uh, and there's a lot of new streets here no more, there's a lot of stuff to be built um, and they don't really do house numbers here uh, at least that's what I was told by the host so she could send me a whole nine page manual on how to get there so let's see if we can figure it out This is for Airbnb because there's tons of different hotels in on all around Oman there's resorts as well but the best way and affordable way to explore and stay around the country, of course, is Airbnb. On the right, you can see a bit on the far left, as indicated by the red circle. You just need to follow the road to route for exit, route in case. <laughs> the development in Omar is so new, there's not even roads, there's no house numbers. We're literally off roading right now, and just look at this. There's just like random plots of land and accommodations here and there. But I think that's our villa down there. We've arrived to our villa. Let's get in. Ooh, nice. Just perfect for us. 
I hope you enjoy our adventure in Oman so far. Don't forget to subscribe if you're not part of our traveling family already. And give this video a like and leave a comment below because we have more of a journey from this sultanate to show you the next video.